Everything you're about to see is made out of math expressions on a graphing calculator. I've been using Desmos to make art for a while now, so I figured I would show some of the things I've done. If you want to look at them more in detail, or you just want proof that they really were made in Desmos, links to all the graphs are in the description below. This was the very first art graph I ever saved to my account, and was made over the course of about a week or so. I used a reference picture of the earth and traced over it using circles. It wasn't originally supposed to have shading and glow, but I added it afterward, as well as a lens flare made out of points. Since this was my very first graph, a lot of what I used is stuff I wouldn't really do today. The circles were made with implicit functions, which are the most resource-intensive kind of function to use, and since there's a couple of hundred of them, it made the whole thing just a bit slow. I somehow did this all on a school Chromebook, which I don't know how I did. A lot of the graphs I've made come from me messing around and experimenting with things, and then going from there. This one was me trying out different designs with polar and parametric curves, and then putting them all together. Then, once I had something I liked, I made the rainbow flower design and added the white wavy lines in the background. A majority of the designs and curves are made with trig functions, with the flower design being made out of rose curves. I was trying to fall asleep at 10.30pm one day, and I suddenly just got a wave of inspiration to make something in Desmos. Two hours later, I arrived at this. I really like the atmosphere I created for this one, especially with all the stars in the background and how it reflects on the water. The reflection design was made with a weird implicit sine wave function that pretty much just came from me changing values around until I found something that worked well. I also made a short song for it, which is what you're hearing in the background right now. I didn't make it more than 8 measures long, so it's really more of a loop than a full song though, but I still like it. At some point I figured out how to make 3D points work in Desmos. I didn't mention it before, but the star maker used it to create the rotating star effect in the center. This graph expands much more on the concept though. I wrote a function to create the points for a 3D cube, and then by stretching it and filling in the sides, I made the buildings. The lighting on the edges for them was mostly done automatically, but it's not anything super fancy. They all use the same exact shading besides a few darker ones that were selected by hand. This is another graph that I really like the atmosphere for. I think the black particles that move across the screen really add to it, as well as how the clouds limit the visibility and make it really foggy. This is definitely one of my favorites. I didn't have any kind of clear vision when I started making this, other than I wanted to do something with planets. It came out so much better than I would have expected though. The glow on the planets, the way the colors blend together, and the way everything seems to blur as they get further away from the camera all make this one of the best executed graphs I've made. I even made a function to change the lighting on the planets depending on their position, since they move ever so slightly in the animation. The asteroid belts were made by creating random points and making polygons out of them. Really, a lot of what makes up this graph is just from stacking a lot of stuff on top of each other. If you look closely at it, you can start to make out some of the individual differences. I was experimenting with effects out of random numbers and came across this really cool background effect, so I felt like I had to do something with it. The platform was made without any reference, but I used a picture of myself that I traced over in order to make the person. The glitch effects behind them were made from taking the points of the silhouettes and offsetting them with random numbers. The background also has an animation to it, but the way that it works is that it randomizes the positions of the rectangles every frame which makes it super flashy. I decided not to include it here, but here it is slowed down a lot so you can see what it would look like.
This craft may not look as impressive as some of the others I've made, at least in my opinion. However, the thing that separates it from the others is the fact that it was made entirely with text labels and symbols. This was after I found out that special character symbols could be inserted in text labels, when normally only letters and numbers are possible. I found this out and decided I wanted to do something with it, which resulted in this. This is another one of my favorites, but unlike Nova, this was one I had a clear idea for. One thing I like to do every once in a while was to draw in what I call a clutter style. Basically, you draw a big shape, like a circle or a square, and then you fill it with as many designs and patterns as you can. It's something that you can do even if you're not good at drawing, and the result comes out really cool each time. I had done this a couple times in Desmos, but I decided I wanted to add a 3D spin on it, so I made six different sides and put them on the surface of the cube using the 3D function I mentioned earlier. Then I added a bunch of background effects and glow to it. I actually recorded my entire process for this, which ended up being 13 hours long across multiple days. I was planning on making a time lapse for it, going over how it was made, but I never got around to finishing it. Maybe I'll work on it again sometime and finally turn it into a video. This is a really small graph, being only 30 expressions long. I originally made this to be used in a different project, but I never got around to finishing it. This graph was originally just a sun and cloud scene, without the seagulls, but then I showed it to my friends and one of them suggested adding them, which I think worked really well. I won't go into too much detail on this one, since I made an entire time-lapse video of it a while ago, with subtitles explaining my process. This was made as a relatively quick graph that I could use to test out commentary-style videos, so I didn't spend as long on it as some of my other projects. I think it turned out really well, but I do wish that I hadn't made it so dark, so you could actually see more of the details in it. I didn't think this video would be complete if I didn't mention the graphs I made for the Desmos art contests. For context, every year Desmos holds a global art competition from November to January where people all over the world can submit graphs they made and then have them be judged. Finalists receive prizes and are chosen across four different age categories, as well as having their graphs be featured on the Desmos homepage. For the past three years, I've made a submission to each of the contests, and they're some of the biggest projects I've undertaken. They also form a trifecta in that each one has something special above the others. The first one is the most expressions I've used in any graph, the second is the most amount of individual detail I've had in any graph, and the final is probably my favorite graph I've made of all time. For the 2022 contest, I made this graph, Cubiverse. It uses the clutter style design I talked about earlier, but includes a bunch of other objects in it as well. The whole goal of this graph was to basically just include as many things in it as possible. This was before I really knew how to optimize my graph, so it's by far the slowest out of the three. It also has over 600 expressions in it. As for the quote, it was something that just kind of popped into my head one day, and I really liked how it sounded, so I'd included it in this graph. For my 2023 submission, I expanded on the idea I had in my 2022 submission and aimed to create a canvas with as much stuff in it as possible. This time, though, I made it interactive. Desmos introduced clickable objects that year that can perform actions, so I hit 20 Pi symbols throughout the graph that you're able to click on. This was to incentivize scrolling through and exploring all the different areas in it. I even included a hint folder for people who got stuck. Since there was so much stuff in it though, I realized performance would be an issue. So I made a slider that changes how much detail is in the graph, which made it much easier to use on lower end devices. Even though there's more detail, I learned a lot more about how to combine expressions and save on space compared to my previous year submission, so it's about 50 expressions shorter.
for the final graph in this video and my most recent contest submission, we have the final boss of math. This is a graph I made a whole video on and is in my opinion one of the best graphs I've ever made. I took a different approach than my previous submissions, mostly because I started this halfway into the time frame for the contest and didn't have time to make a full canvas again. So with only a month's worth of time, I came up with this. The original idea came from me wondering if I could use the integral symbol as feathers to make a pair of wings, and it took off from there. A lot of the designs in this graph are based on math concepts. Some examples include the pupil being a zero, with a negative one to the left of it and a one to the right, the flower being made out of rose curves, the hand having 12 fingers to represent the base 12 number system, and the unit circle behind it, as well as some others. Hopefully I convinced you that Desmos can actually be a really good tool for making art. If you made it this far in the video and you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like, it really helps out. I only have like 40 subscribers at the moment, so really anything at all helps a ton. I'm considering making some videos going over how I made certain graphs in a lot more detail, as well as general tips and tricks I use in Desmos to make art. If anyone would be interested in seeing videos like that, please let me know. Other than that, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'll see you later.